Hi, and thanks for joining us today as we dive deeper into God's Word and spending a little time with Him. I'm glad that you have uh, logged in, clicked the link, and all that good stuff. Uh, and thanks for joining us as we continue uh, this little series in October of how God is doing a new thing. Uh, that the old is past. Uh, the past, of course, is behind us uh, as we continue to trek through the future, no matter how hard or anxious it can be. Um, that God's doing a new thing and having a new perspective on what he's doing in your life, um, no matter the hills or the valleys that you're going through. Me and my family just recently moved, and it's nice to see the perspective of my kids who have lived most of their lives really in Florida. They don't know anything else. And so driving up here as we hit South Georgia and we start hitting the hills, they get excited. They say, look, these are mountains, right? We're like, no, not quite. Uh, we continue to drive north, uh, and it gets a little more hillier. Uh, I don't know if that's a word. Um, but they get excited. Look, look, these are mountains. Not quite. Until we get to North Georgia and stay, start to head into the Paradise Division uh, and hitting the mountains and seeing those for the first time. And even my son talked about the leaves changing. He said, what happens, Dad? Do they just change overnight and they're red and orange and yellow? I said, no, it takes time. You don't really notice it. Then all of a sudden you look up and it's there. Like Major Ann talked about last week, the tree has a process uh, as we take through that process. But their perspective on uh, this new area of living for us uh, is very neat to see. Uh, and today we're going to look at perspective. How we view things is our perspective. A uh, particular attitude towards a way of regarding something, a point of view, a perspective, and how Christ calls us to change our perspective. We're in the same world. We're still of this world. We still have to live our lives here on this earth. But Christ comes and gives us, gives us a di different perspective. And when that perspective changes, we get a new perspective, right? The way we think what will happen in the future what our expectations are, uh, and how that affects uh, what we do today. And so we're going to look at uh, Colossians 3. Uh, if you open the word in that letter there from Paul uh, to the early Christians in the church there. In the verse 1 of chapter 3, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Change your perspective. Set your heart, the way you see things, uh, on things above. Your focus should be what? Christ. And he is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds, right? Again, changing your perspective on things above. Not on earthly things, for you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. A sight into the prospect of what's happening. What's the expectation for the future? Me being with Christ in glory. That's my expectation. That changes my perspective in life. And when things I come up against, when I face giants, you know, the Israelites came up and they saw this giant Goliath. And they said, "How he's so big. How can we even kill him? That will never happen. But then David comes in and sees the same exact giant, huge warrior. He says, man, he's so big, how can I miss him? And of course, we know that David had the victory. And it all started with his perspective, how he saw the giant. Paul is talking to the church there and how they need to change their, the way their hearts, their minds, the way they see things. They see things of this earth. They see the old in, in their lives, the sin, the anger, the lust. Maybe we have worries about new things that God is trying to do. The first part of, of 2020, of course, God doing these things, we don't understand why is this all happening? Why is everything being canceled? Why are we planning things and that's being canceled? Doesn't he want this to happen? These are important things, right, to God, but they're not happening. Maybe we're worried about our kids' education schooling do they go to school or do they not go to school am i doing it right am i doing the virtual part right well, i need to go to work but maybe i need to stay home with my kids who can i leave them by themselves 
Or maybe you're just worried about everything happening in 2020. Will it change? Will 2021 be any different? Like Major Ann said last week, we're expecting New Year's Eve of 2020 just, yep, switch back on to normal life. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. But my perspective on what is happening is different because I have Christ. And so I see it in a different light. For I'm focusing on eternity with him, glory with him. That's my final goal as a follower of Christ. And so my perspective, right, the way I see things, changed my perspective and affects how I live my life and how I see these hard things that we are going through together. Matthew 6, 34, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, right? But set my thing, my mind, my heart on God. As Christians, we've been given much more than a facelift. We have died to our old selves and we've been raised up in a new life in Christ. All that is true of the risen Christ is now true of us. All that is true of Christ is now true of us if we have accepted his invitation to live life following him. If we've asked him to clear our hearts of sin and start afresh, pour out a grace in our lives, and started following Christ, being discipled by him, and starting to look and act like him so the world sees him more, our perspective changes. Now we must continually keep seeking and setting our minds on the things above. We must continually change our perspective in seeing how we face the giants day in and day out. Do we see giants and say, there's no way, God? Or do we see giants and say, this is going to be awesome victory because I know my God will have the victory today. He will handle it. Where are your true life is hidden in Christ and God. We, as we live in light of our new identity in Christ, our new perspective, we will win the battle against anything we face, whether it's sin or something that keeps hang, we have this hang up on, uh, whether it's the anxiety of what's happening in the world today. Uh, no matter what it is, we see it differently. And when we have a changed perspective on things, then we must change the way we live life to give us a new perspective, right? Doing things differently, seeing things differently. As we continue to reading in chapter uh, 3 of Colossians, put to death, therefore, death, it's a strong word, put to death, the old, right? Whatever belongs to your earthly nature. And he lists a few things, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, and greed, which is idolatry. A lot of these things are no-brainers. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You, you used to walk in these ways. You used to have a different perspective on what these things were in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves, and he lists a few other things, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from our lips. A little bit harder things, we dive deeper into this list, right? This is um, not so much, uh, the other things are surface level things, we dig deeper, there's a few other things we're diving into. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. You have a new perspective, a new way of looking at life and the challenges that we are facing in 2020, you see them uh, as a way uh, that God is moving and God is changing, opening our eyes to certain things, social injustices that are happening uh, in this nation, is specifically opening our eyes to see these things. The bad is happening, but God is going to use that. And hopefully, uh, as we follow Christ, as Christ followers, we'll use those things uh, to better this world and show Christ in this world. And Paul says, you have taken off your old nature and you have put on a new nature. Talking about this imagery of clothing, you're taking off these old clothes, right? They're worn out. He's going to do something new in us. Sometimes we get comfortable in old clothes. We don't really want to get new clothes. Um, we know they fit right. We know how they 
how they wear. We know the comfort of old clothes they're worn in. But they're also old, they're dirty, they're dungy. And Christ wants to give us new clothing, a new a way of looking at things. And he puts us on new, clean clothes. Christians learn about Christ from the Bible as we read and spend time in his word and spend time with him. As people love Christ more, they want to be more like Christ. That's ultimately our journey. Our goal is to be Christ-like. And they want to obey him uh, and ultimately please God. And finally, therefore, right? Verse 12, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. And any, if any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. God's calling us, as Paul writes to Colossians, he's calling us today to change our perspective on what's going on in our world. I don't know what's going on in your life today. I know I have my own anxieties, the own, oh, my own things that I am worrying about, uh, my kids and education, uh, this new position that I'm in, um, this new culture that I'm living in, uh, and just 2020 all together, right? Uh, with social injustices and pandemics and um, politicians that really I wish we start over on. But how am I viewing these things? That's the difference I can change. How am I taking my perspective and do I see these giants in my life that could cause me fear and anxiety where I just stand there and wait or uncomfortable far away? Or do I see them as David saw the giant Goliath? Though I see him as an ultimate victory that God will have in my life. That God's doing a new thing. And no matter where he leads me, he will provide, he will guide, he will protect, he will surround me. And he will light a path for me if I follow him, if I follow his directions, if I'm in his word, if I take off the old and start wearing the new. My, so one of my favorite lyrics and songs is, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Today, wherever you're at, no matter what's going on around you, take this time now to seek the face of Christ. And all the old stuff will fade away. And nothing will matter as your perspective, and your viewpoint into Christ and what he has for you. Because of the light of his glory and grace. Have a good, nice day. God bless you. Hopefully Christ has changed your perspective on the giants you're facing today.